Okay, so we uh, started the Mishnah Chaf Vav Amidbei is the bottom. Uh, see here, so right, we the last thing we said is Ma'arvin and Nazir Biyayin. Right at the bottom of the page, and you're allowed to make an error for Nazir with wine, and you're allowed to make a error for Yisrael with Chuma. And Sumchas Eimer Bechulin. So some two lines from the bottom. Sumchas add that you are not allowed to make a uh, an eruv for Yisrael with Chuma. It must be with Chulin uh, because of the fact that the Kayin. Uh, only the Kayin can eat the Chuma, and uh, the Yisrael can't. Interesting, why, well, why wouldn't then Sumchus argue with the Nazir as far as wine? So we'll have to see about that. But we, let's just do the Rashi. Sumchus Ayma B'chulin, Avaloi B'chuma. Sumchus argues on the Chuma halach, that if you want to make an error for Yisrael, you can't put Chuma down, you can't put... Uh, a chuma take a box of striped matzahs in the, to make your Erev, because if you're Yisrael, you can't eat that matzah, and therefore that's not going to be acceptable. Okay, because you need something that's fitting to be able to be eaten. And in the Gemara, we're going to explain why doesn't Sumchus also argue with the wine for the Nazir? Why does he only pick one of the two scenarios? Why not the other? Okay, that takes care of the chuma factor and the uh, eating. F- the issue is what you know. What kind of things can you put down to make the eruv? And ulukayim be as far as where you put the eruv, even if you're a kaya and you want to make an eruv, can you make? Can you put the eruv down in a be sapras in a plowed field where there was a corpse in that field, and now it's plowed where rabbinically you can't a kaya can't walk into that field. Um, the Allah is that a kain could make the the uh, the uh, put the uh, uh, the air of there. So look at the last Rasha on the page. Okay, this is a stam statement. This is not attributed uh, particularly to a specific uh, Tana, but this is the Misha sta- stating it so anon- uh, anonymously that you are allowed to make put the air of in a base of pras. Vlav sumchus Menichin, and what's he saying? So Rashi continues. Menichin erev le kayim beis apras avagav the bidon the matzil mezel le mishkalei umichlei hasam. Even though the concept of putting a uh, putting uh, an erev in a place, what's the whole concept that you're you're acquiring that place and that's your new abode? Even though you're, right now you're staying in the city limits, but if you're within the if you're within the um, you're able to get to that area, that's your real place where you designated before Shabbos that you're starting there. And therefore, you can leave the city, walk up to your newly acquired abode, which you acquired before Shabbos, and you're, you're good to go. And you, but, it's, but don't you have to be able to go there and eat the Erev there? How in the world, if you can't get there, how in the world can that be considered your place of abode where when Shabbos comes, so that you can consider the Erev starting from that point, the Erev Tchumen, where you're, allowed to, you're, allowed to, you're going to be walking beyond the 2,000 Amis of the city limits. So how, how in the world can you do that? If a Kayin can, is allowed to walk into a base of Pras, how could a base of Pras be the place where he acquires Shvisa? Okay, so uh, what's the gimel? Kilu shavas sham the 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 lav beisayu for lemotzel meider sham. It's not his house, and he can't stay there. So he says, um, "Why?" The beis apras shaper dummy. In a beis apras, it's okay. The sveiker are born in who? Okay, umutter likarns that they nafuach. So we had mentioned that there are ways. We learned this earlier, uh, some time ago, that uh, a, a kayin could, there is a way of crossing a base hapras. Not an easy way, but if you blow your way through, the whole concern is that there are bones at the very top of the ground that, uh, you know, spread around at the time of the plowing. Well, you could, if you go step by step, like, I guess, similar to some kind of, you know, a marine looking for a, for a mine as he, you know, slowly crawls down the field looking for any possible mine. So you're looking for, for bone for bone struggle, you know, bone uh, uh, fragments or whatever. So you can, as you go step by step, you sort of blow your way down, you know, the area, and you uh, see, you 
I guess, blow the grass just to see, you know, what's, what's there. So it is possible. So if it's possible, even though it might be difficult, but uh, it's ultimately the whole thing is a Suffolk Rabbana Rashi says, it's more to enter there through Nefuach, and therefore a Kayin can legitimately put his Erev in a base Sapras, even though generally he is, um, he is prohibited from going there rabbinically. Okay, Rabbi Yudah Eimer, back to the Mishnah. Last line of the Mishnah on this page. Rabbi Yudah Eimer, Afilu Bein HaKfaris. Afilu Bein HaKfaris, Nei Shiochol, Lochutz, Vleilech, Vlechol. Even a basic forest, Rabbi Yudah says, I'll, I'll see you and raise you. Not only can a Kayin go to a base of Pras, which is potentially Mutter, to get into, even further, literally basic forest, a cemetery, which you'd say, how in the world is, is a Kayin going to be able to put his box of matzahs in a cemetery, how could the cemetery uh, be a place where the Kayin can enter? Terrence says, yes, because you're allowed, you can make a mechitza, put yourself in a box, okay, separate yourself from, from the um, basic forest, and you can go and you can have your matzah there in a, in a potentially permissible fashion. So you take a look at the top Rashi, you can make a mechitza between him and the and the uh, cemetery, the place of burial. Shalom Yal Olav, where he will not be making an oil, because you're only in a you're only mile over a mace if you walk over the mace. There's nothing separating between between you and the mace. Okay? Okagain, how do you make a separation between, between you and the mace in a basic forest? Ogon Bashida Tevo Migdal. You have these boxes and chests and uh, and uh, type of you know cabinets. So you uh, can't shambojom. You can go into there. You know, pick yourself uh, these fancy like you know wagons for the kings. These um, um, what are they call whatever um, Carriage. carriages, right? Thanks. Okay. Bibojom baagalo baagalos imyitzer. If you want to do that, you could go there. Right? There, there are people who uh, right. They just if you're cutting you and you're driving over a cemetery, right? You close the windows and you're good to go. Um, and, uh, you know, some people are machme or whatever, but that's the basic structure, the basic mahalach is that even in a car, if you close up any a- areas of uh, opening, you're, you're okay if, you, if you're kind of driving over a cemetery in a car. So you can do the same thing individually. So it's fitting. There's a way for me to get there. It's not like it's completely out of, out of the realm. And as long as there's a potential to get there, that's good enough. So we're learning from here that you don't actually have to go. You can be kind of shvisa in a place. You don't actually have to be there to eat the matzah. As long as I could get to eat the matzah, that becomes my abode. And I, I now have 2,000 amas from that place to go further if I want to walk further on, on Shabbos. Okay. Let's start the Gemara. Top of Chavzai. Number of Yechen. Ein lemedim in So let's start with a general rule. The general rule is you cannot learn from general rules. Okay. Um... That's the rule. Even in a place where the Mishnah says, or Tana says, the word chutz, which you say, you know, um, these are the, uh, you can't do this except for these two situations. Well, then you say, for sure, if you say except for these two situations, there are only two situations. But the answer is no. You ain't made them in a close, even general rules with the word chutz in it, does not necessarily cover every chutz case. And you might have other cases. So don't, don't um, learn from general rules, even when there are exceptions written into those general rules, it doesn't mean that the only that it's the only exception. Uh, why? Oh, well, uh, no, not why. But so now they were just making a simple inference. Me the kamra feel mokum shema b'chutz. If Rabbi Yochanan added these words, do not learn from kolos, even in a case that word even is extending his his general rule and is telling us not to learn from general rules. That means the case that he's going on, clearly Rabbi Yochanan was obviously referring to something when he, when he was compelled to make this statement. He was looking at something, and what he was looking at basically told him, uh-oh, I don't want people to make this mistake, so I better tell them don't learn from, from, from generalities. Don't derive things from general statements, which, which, even if they seem to imply that you can learn something from them. Don't do it. But that means in that case there was no chutz. Right, so mid the kamar, I feel makom shenav b'chutz michad the lav hacha koi. That he's not going on that case of the chutz. So hecha koi. So what is he going on? In other words, if the case he was going on had the word chutz in it already, then he wouldn't have said afilu 
never by chutz. He just would have said, and then, like a case like this, where there's a chutz, don't learn from don't learn from kolos. But since he him, he himself added those words, I feel that the case he was referring to didn't have chutz, and he is now adding, you can't even learn when there's a chutz there. That's the subtle deal that the word is making from Rabbi Yochanan's statement. Now we want to know what was he referring to. So which case was he going on where he, he, where he felt a need to tell us don't learn from this general rule? And clearly that case is not going to have a chutz. Because if it had a chutz, that can't be what, what he was referring to. So let's see the Rashi. Uh, anytime you see the word klal, which is often used in the in the Mishnah's vernacular, here's a rule, you know, klal amru, that, whenever you see that word klal, um, let me nadafka who, dika klal, it's it's uh, th- that it's specific and and uh, uh, you know just very very uh, specific is the best word um, uh, and therefore you can derive from there that whatever is not in the cloud doesn't belong in the cloud right don't make that inference that this is the rule and then there are no exceptions Lloyd Duckman will say because there are times that the Tan is not duck in his words, he's not so exact in his words, there are things that don't fit into that cloud. Like we're going to mention. So here's a general rule, must be the general rule has no exceptions, right? So, I mean, that's two points. Number one, when I say a general rule, don't assume everything's in that rule, which, and I didn't say so, because even if I didn't say so, there might be things not in the rule. And that's one mistake not to make. Okay, when I don't say chutz, and the second mistake not to make is I feel makom shemav chutz midava plain. You know, when I say the exception to the rule, don't assume that that's the only exception. Diklame mamida afke lahai vaday dok bechal. Maybe you're going to argue that if you took certain things out of the general rule, clearly those are the only things that you're taking out. Diklame mamida afke lahai lahai vaday dok bechalai. I feel achli alfina minei. Okay, because you, you, one can assume if the if the Tana said chutz, clearly these are the only chutzes. No, even though you might say that, don't learn from there the Dilma Shire, because maybe there are other things that he left out. He did not exclude everything he needed to exclude. Tanoim have their own agendas of what they need to what they need to focus in on and what they want to talk about, and there might be actually other things in that exception that aren't in the exception. There might be other exceptions. So don't make either mistake. Either when there's a cloud without a chutz or when there's a cloud with a chutz. On either side, don't make the mistake to say that that statement is exactly written as is and there's no um, possible uh, you know, uh, exceptions to those, to those rules and to those exceptions. Okay. Let's see here. So your next Rashi. Me, the color of Yochan, feel michal. Okay, that since Rabbi Yochanan said, the Chi Omar Lumil say, Lav Hoch Omra, since Rabbi Yochanan said, Afil Michlal, the Chamrino Lumil say, Lav Hoch Omra, that the, uh, right, so since he uses the word Afilu, Okay, that we can infer that when he said his general rule, he wasn't referring to this case. His general rule was referring into a case where there was no chutz. But when he said afilu, the afilu is adding to this scenario, to the specific context of what Rabbi Yochan was originally referring to. Okay, because uh, here in the additional case, in the extension case, is where Chutz is being said. And from his words, you can infer that his initial basic statement was not referring to a case of Chutz. And that's why he added the word even. Don't think um, that this rule of not learning from rules uh, applies only to a case where there is no chutz, but he's extending it. Even in the case of, of, of chutz, still you shouldn't learn from the rules. But Rashi just explaining where was, you know, what, how did the Gemara see that word afilu, just one little word can tell you so much that the Gemara is able to infer from Yochan's statement that he's not, he was not originally focused on that 
case. The, he, he's not talking about the Chutz case. He's talking about the non-Chutz case. So our job is to find a non-Chutz case, which justifies his rule. And then we can maybe look for the Chutz cases. But clearly, the initial statement was made on a case where there is no Chutz. So where are we going on? What, what was he referring to? What was he learning that compelled him to make this statement? So let's, let's give this a shot. Hasam Koy. He's going over there. What's over there? A Gemara in Kedushin. Kedushin Shom Chavtaz. Very famous Gemara. Kol Mitzvah Seshaz Man Gromo Anoshim Chayiv Chayovin V'noshim Peturos. Any time-bound positive commandment, men are obligated and women are putter. Right? This is something that we all know when it's based on this famous Mishnah. V'shlaz Man Gromo and when it's not a time-bound commandment, both men and women are obligated. So if you leave this mission, you walk away with the clear impression that this is the rule. No ifs, ands, or buts, that if it's time-bound, women are exempt, and if it's not time-bound, women are obligated. Really? Okay, Ukolohu, is this really the rule? So this is now, I guess, where the, you know, the Gemara sort of supposing what Rabbi Yochanan is thinking and, and what compelled him to make the statement of Ukolohu, is that really the general rule? The Chol Mitzvah says, is man, Grom, Anoshim, Peturos, that all time-bound mitzvahs, women are exempt. We know that's not true. We know tonight that's not true. Okay, in a few hours, we're going to make sure that our wives are at the, um, at the, at the uh, Kiddush table. Hare, hare matzah, simcha, vahakel. Okay, which is, and uh, that's, okay, but that's one that hits you, but that's not what we were referring to. Matzah, simcha, and hakel. What about these three mitzvos? Of Matzah Simchan Akel, the Mitzvah says Shazman Gramahu, the positive commandment bound by time, Venoshim Chayavos, and women are obligated. So clearly, we know that it's not true because we have three very, very well-known mitzvos. Okay, of uh, Vidi Matzah on Pesach, of Simchas Yontif, and of Hakel, of this once every seven year event of getting everybody together. Where the Torah says it's time bound, and yet women are obligated. Um, Right. Okay, let's just read the, the next one. We'll go to the Rashis. And furthermore, let's go to the second party rule. And really, women are obligated in all non-time bound mitzvahs? Is that really a fact? Is that really an, an undebatable, not exceptional, uh, no exception rule? Talmud Taira, Pir Virivya, Upidyan Ben. What about these three famous, positive, not time bound mitzvahs, such as Talmud Torah? Okay, Puru, okay, being uh, having the obligation to have children. Upidina Ben, okay, and redeeming the the uh, firstborn son. Those I say Shlosman Gram, where the these are not time bound mitzvahs, right? There's no set time. I mean, there's a time where Pidina Ben begins, but it's not. It, it goes on forever until you do it. Venoshim um, Peturos and women are exempted based on different drushes. They are exempted. Therefore, if you look at this rule. You clearly see that this rule has exceptions to the rule. So what do you, what can you learn from that? Therefore, Elam Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan responded to these obvious questions on the rule. Elam Edim and Akolos, you cannot learn from rules. Afilu Mokam Shem Abachutz. And then he, he threw in as an afterthought, even in a case where there's a Chutz mentioned, you still cannot learn from that Chutz. That Chutz itself might be, in a sense, misleading and not covering all, every single area. Okay, let's catch up on the Rashi's here. Um, matzah. Nashim Maturos. Perkama the Gedushin Yol of Taimah. So the Gemara learns out the reasoning from, uh, for this in the Gemara Kedushin, famous, uh, I believe it's a Miwi that says it's, it's the logic behind, the, the, the Gemara just brings a drush. The Gemara does not bring the logic behind the drush, which rarely does the Gemara do that. When we have Xeris Akasav, that's it. Xeris the, te- the drush teaches me that's a lacha. But, um, the Miri, uh, famous Miri, seems uh, says that it's uh, it's about the the women being uh, on time bound issues might be challenged based on their obligations for the house, and um, therefore uh, it would be a conflict with all these time bound mitzvahs and their basic responsibility to to raise the family and take care of everything in the house, and therefore um, I don't know if you want to learn that maybe with the feminists, but that's a different story. Okay, um, yeah, matzah. Okay, what are the, so what are the ba- time-bound mitzvahs that women are obligated? Laila Rishona, Chovas Asehi, Be'er of Tochel Matzos, right? We spend money not just for ourselves when we pay 
thirty dollars a pound. Okay, but we're spending money for the women as well. They must eat the matzah. As the Torah says, Bear of Tochu Matzas, Fishar Koyomim. Okay, that night you must eat matzah. We, we, we connect the matzah with the chametz, that whoever is in the chametz is in the matzah. Fishar Koyomim, in Rotzel's his topic, Babasa, Bolachem, Ein Choyvel of Lechel. I don't know why Rashi has to throw that in. The rest of the days, you want to just have steaks without matzah, you're allowed to, even though Yekis don't like when you have a big meal without washing. But generally, but you know, there's no chiv to to wash at other meals. Even on Pesach, where it might be a mitzvah if you wash, but it's not a chiv to wash. The first night, you got to eat the matzah, you got to wash, you got to eat the matzah. It's all part of the Seder, and that's the way it is. Okay, that's one example. The second example of, of time-bound commandments where women are obligated is simcha. When the Torah says, you and your household have to rejoice, that rejoicing includes the women. Umatanami chayvulanoshim. Msechus psachim. Oh, I thought Rashi left matzah already. Now he's going back to matzah. Um, what's that little ches? Um, okay, not sure why he goes back here. Umatanami chayvas anashim. Matzah is also an obligation for women. B'msechus psachim. Yakeshad lo tzachol of chametz. Shivas yom tochol matzahs. Right, the same pasuk says, don't eat chametz and eat matzahs. Whoever is in the prohibition of not eating chametz is in the obligation of eating matzah. And of course, women dealing with a, a negative commandment that, has, that is so severe, any negative commandment, women are obligated, certainly one with, with a chorus attached to it. The chametz is also in Hashem Muzaros, Kanashim, Parakamadigishim. There, too, the Gemara makes clear that women are obligated in all negative commandments. So if women are obligated in the not eating chametz, Women are also obligated to eating matzah. Why he didn't say this earlier, I'm not sure. But uh, Rashi waited for here. Okay, but that takes care of two out of three. Now we're left with hakel. Hakel b'mayed shnasa shmita in the yontif of Sukkot in the year um, of shmita b'chaga sukkos b'mayed shnasa shmita b'chaga sukkos hamelech omen albima the king stands up. On the bima, v'kor lufneim mitzvahs mishnah Torah. Lisa b'seita. The the king reads uh, the the mar the mitzvah kor lufneim mitzvahs mishnah Torah. I get, I'm not sure mitzvah mishnah Torah sounds like he reads devarim kedisa b'sota uksev anoshim anoshim ataf. And this obligation to read mishnah Torah, which generally applies to devarim. Um, it means devarim, this obligation to read the Torah and have everyone here included the men, the women, and the children. So you see that women are obligated in the mitzvah of hakel. So there you have three. Why we don't mention Shabbos, I don't know. Because Shabbos is certainly the Zohar v'shomar, right? There's an obligation to remember Shabbos, which is a positive commandment, and we know the women are obligated. That's part of the Kiddush thing. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess maybe somebody, I don't see Tosa's getting into it, but okay, um, probably discussed somewhere. So let's, and what about the exception on the other side? What about the uh, positive commandments that are not bound by time? How do we know, <clears throat> how do we know that the women, or which are the ones that the women are obligated in, even though, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, we're the, we're, we're, that they're not obligated, even though they should be, because they're not, they're not bound by time, and yet women are not obligated. This is an exception to the other part of the rule, Talmud Torah, Noshim Paturos. Women are not obligated to learn Torah. In the classical sense that a man is. So it says you teach your sons, and we learn out from there your sons are not your daughters, and if you're not obligated to teach, you're not obligated to learn. <clears throat> that's part of the, the drusha there uh, in Gemara Kedushin. Okay, that's one obligation which they don't have, even though it's not bound by time. And Pir Vriyivya, the Ksiv, Pru Uvru, Umilu Vikavshu. Okay, the Torah says, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the world and conquer it. It's the way of the men to conquer <coughs> and to, you know, uh, take control over the world. It's not the way of the women to do that. So, as a result, um, the, the women are therefore excluded from the midst of Puravu. And the last one, which they're excluded from, even though it's not time bound, is Pidyan Abed. The obligation to redeem <coughs> your firstborn son is an obligation on the father, not on the mother. 
Okay, since it says tipa there, kari be tifte. Okay, which means we learn out from there. Kol shechayev liftos, lipados chayev liftos. If you're obligated to uh, redeem uh, yourself, and if you're obligated to be redeemed, then you chayev to redeem others. Chayev liftos beno v'isha and bechal pinyan atzma. Women is not obligated to redeem herself except bechor benechod tifde v'lo beno secha. So women are not obligated in the, in the obligation of redeeming themselves. So they don't have to be redeemed, and therefore they don't have to redeem others. They don't have an obligation if they have a son to be involved in that redemption process. So if you're not one to need to be redeemed, you're not one to have to be a redeemer as well. So therefore women, even though let's say the husband passed away, or the husband can't do it, and now the, the, um, the, uh, it falls on the next, the next uh, person to do it, it's a bezin which has an obligation, but not the mother. Mother could do it, uh, you know, like anybody else could do it, but it's not an obligation that falls on her. So, if she's not obligated to be redeemed, she's not obligated to be a redeemer of her child. Okay. This takes care of all of the exceptions, which led Rabbi Yechanan to say this rule that Eilu made them in Akolos. So, Amr Abaye, let's continue in the Gemara. Abaye says, Afana Namatinina. Omar Bai Vitem Rabirmiya. So Bai or Rabirmiya said on this, I will bring you another Mishnah, another source that will support this rule of, of Rabbi Yechran. Okay, another case where there's an exception, and that exception is not, uh, I mean, where there's a rule, and that rule that does have exceptions to it, and therefore, one further, another proof that you cannot learn out from these scenarios. What's this other rule that we learned? This other klal. So it's it's a mishnah in in zav zav zavin. Okay, perikay mishnah beis. Afan amatina oid kal achar amru. When it comes to the tuma zav, which we know is some kind of a ganaria type flow that a man has that renders him tame. Okay, and he has certain rules that are unique to to um, to his status. So o kal amru. A call Akhram, but there's another rule that said, Kol Shanisa Al Gabe Hazov Tome, anything that is carried on top of the Zov, Tome, okay, Vukol Shazov Nisa Alov, Tahar, and anything that is um that is underneath the Zov. So there's things that are on top of the Zov that the Zov is carrying, okay, which have the ability to transmit tumma, even though there's not direct contact. Normally, you need direct contact for tumma, but here you, you can become tumma even without direct contact. Okay, and anything that the zav puts pressure on and uh, sits on, uh, or is or being carried by the thing underneath, tar royal except for those things that are fitting to be sat on by the zav. Things that are fit for the item underneath you to carry, vada. Okay, so if it's inanimate, it's got to be mishka v'moshe things that he can typically lie on or sit on a chair, a bed, things like that, vada, and for, and an adam as well. So these are the cases where if something's underneath the zav, it needs to be roy mishka v'moshe v'adam. These are the three, really, and there are no others. Okay, and, and or anything that the Zav itself is carrying on his, let's say if something falls on him and he's carrying that thing on his shoulder, that thing that he's carrying on his shoulder also becomes Tome like the Zav itself. But, okay, this seems to be a pretty clear-cut rule. You've got Kosha Nisa Al Gabi Zav and anything which is underneath the Zav, which is, which is fit for it, okay, Lemishka Lemoshev. Okay, really? Vesuleka? So all you have is Mishkov, Moshev, and Adam? Ayv, Ika, Merkav? What about things that you're riding on? What about things that you would uh, normally ride on? Why would that? Where is that in the Mishnah? So, I don't... What do you mean, Merkav? Things which you would ride on? Hay Merkav, I don't know. What do you mean, Merkav? What, what are you referring to? What's the case? Idios, if you're sitting on the saddle that's on the donkey, well, that's Moshev, right? He's Hayno Moshev. That's exactly what is referred to by Moshev. So what do you mean that you're trying to ask me why isn't there another category mentioned in the Mishnah? That other category is mentioned in the Mishnah. That's part of Moshev. If it's a saddle, things that a person would sit on. No. So the Gemara is asking, Anan what I'm asking is like this, there is this 
extension of the saddle that, you know, it sort of comes up. You're not sitting on it, but it's something that you hold to sort of hold yourself, right? There's, if, um, when people go horseback riding, they have this air, this part of the saddle that, that elevates, that sort of, you know, keeps you in the check from falling off and flying in every different direction. So you're sort of holding on to that little um, elevated area uh, of that saddle. Okay, you're not sitting on that. That's is viewed as a separate entity. Maybe maybe it was separate in those days. I don't know, but it's Gava de Uchva is something that also should have mentioned the Tanya because it says in a brayso Ha'okiv Tomei Moshev. Okay, Ve'atofus Tomei Merkav. Okay, um, that if that the saddle is Tomei Moshev and the Tofus is Tomei Merkav. So you see that there's a Tum Merkav called, as part of this toughest, what you're holding on to, that has an independent um, entryway into the laws of Tumma. Okay, and it's called Tumas Merkav. So why would the Mishnah leave that out if the Mishnah wants to talk about things? Why only mention Moshev, Mishkav, and Moshe, whatever into Merkav, Ella? So the fact that Merkav is not mentioned, even though it should have been mentioned, must be El Shmamino, Enel made them in a Kolos. Okay, you cannot learn from Kolos. Here's another example of where Rabbi Yochanan's rule applies, okay, um, and uh, and applies even when the word chutz is used. Still, you cannot learn from rules. Okay, let's catch up on the Rashi's here. Kol shenisa agabe azov el This is what you call that's a, things that are above the zav, that are on top of the zav. That the zav is carrying, as opposed to. It carrying the zav. This is the zav carrying it. Except bechol ashiyah tachtov. Anything that's underneath it. You know, perik benoyis kusim. My tachtov. What does it mean tachtov? Anything that's underneath it. Inayim tachtov the zav. If you're referring to, if you think it's referring to a case where you're underneath the zav, hayna mishka. Okay, can't be underneath the zav because that's part of Thomas mishkov. When the zav lies on it, that's mishkov, and that's tachtov the zav. Ella bechol ashiyah zav tachtov. What the Torah is referring to is when the Zav is underneath it, where, where the Zav is carrying it as opposed to it carrying the Zav. Vahainu, and that's called in the uh, laws of Tum of Tyra, in the holy world of Tyrus, El Yonish Zav. That's called the El Yonish Zav, that which is above the Zav and on top of the Zav, and the Zav is carrying it. Okay, so that takes care of that. So that has a, there's a general rule that whenever you're on, when, whenever the Zav is carrying you, you become Tomei, even though, again, there's not physical contact, but it's just through the carrying. Chutz, and then you also have anything which is underneath the Zav. The Zav is carrying it, that it applies. Chutz, min haroi l'mishka v'moshev. Except for those things that are fit to be lied upon and to be sat upon. Avul she'en roi tar. But if it's not fit, if it's the kind of thing that you're sitting on, but somebody else is going to come by and say, can you please get up, I need that, right? So um, uh, that is a different story. And it says in, in, in the uh, second or third paragraph of Chagiga, called Chaymer B'Kaidish, Yochol, Kofa, Sov, Yoshev, Allah, Yehei, Tomei. I might think if you turn over a basket that you're holding things in, that if you turn it over and you sit on it, that would, a measure that would hold a, a saw worth of, of grain or whatever, um, that if you sit on it, you're Tomei. Tamalaymar, Yoshev, Allah, Kli, Ashi, Yoshev, Allah. Those words, Ashi, Yoshev, Allah, teach me, Misham, Yuchad, Yeshiva. You've got to be uniquely... Uh, identified and uh, and directed towards the purpose of yeshiva. Okay, Ex- accepting these uh, this type of item like a basket. People don't sit on the basket. It's not baskets that I'm meant to be sat on. You want to happen to use it. You want to just take it, make a little uh, makeshift little. You want to turn it over and sit on it because you want to relax. That you know, go ahead and relax. But that you can't say that 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 over that turned over basket is muchel yeshiva. Because somebody's going to come along and say, "Can you please get up? I got to do my work. I need the basket for my for my uh, job and for things that I have to do." So when it comes to um, being underneath the Zav, you need to be uniquely fit for that purpose. Otherwise, it will not trans, transmit Tumah in this sort of unique kind of way. Where even though there's not direct physical contact, you're still gonna, going to become Tumah. Because in a typical world, there's something on top of a table, and the, somebody, somebody whose Tumah touches the thing on top, well, the person is an Av, the thing on top becomes a Rishon. That's it. There's no contamination because a Rishon can't metama kli, which can only become tummy through an av. 
So if I'm going to be able to transmit something which where I'm not touching it directly, I have my clothes separating or something else. So that needs the status of Moshev and, and the Mishkov to be able to have that unique status of being able to become like me, even though it's it's not me. And, and, and it shouldn't typically be Tommy. Okay. And for Adam, the Ksiv Anosi Osam, Afad of Bemashma Osam, if anybody who carries them, so if a man decides to put an Adam on his, on his back and carry him piggyback, that man will become Tomei even though there's not direct physical contact because, you know, maybe there's clothing in between, doesn't matter. But if I'm carrying you, that din that normally applies to inanimate objects that you're fitting, a man, even though he's not fitting, right, you wouldn't say a man is, is designed to carry another man on his back, right? You wouldn't say that. But because of the Pasuk, he's going to become Tomei anyway. Okay, but, but the Gemara says, and really, is that the only rule? What about this, um, this Uchfa? Gava de Uchva, which is also a toughest, as the Bryce says, the toughest the Ukif. Okay, Artsun Blaz. Kshoroichev, when you're riding on an animal, Typhus Baosa eight, you hold on to that piece of wood, Shnikra Artsun, Ulhachim Tami Shumerkav, and you become Tame as a Thomas Merkav. There is, um, there is one we, I guess, maybe somehow we'll find it along the way in Shas, although Tyrus is not part of Shas for the most part, um, but there is a, there are differences between um, Moshev and Merkav, but that's really not Nogea really, really for us, but the point is, certainly it, it's part of the, the exception to the rule, so how come we don't mention this, must be that Rabbi Yochanan is right, must be that Rabbi Yochanan got his, um, got his di- directive, not necessarily from here, but it's one of those places where Ein Lameidim and Akolos, there's a Klau, but that cloud is not an all-inclusive cloud. Okay. So we're up to Ravina. Right? So back to the Gemara. We finished all the Rashis. Um Ravina, the Itema Rav Nachman. Here also we have two versions who said this. Okay, Ravina or Rav Nachman said, Afan and Amatino. Okay, I will learn another example to this rule. And here we finally have... Um, yeah, actually, okay. I'm so, well, we already we already had a chutz. Okay, I, didn't, I should have mentioned that. In other words, uh, that in the, in case number two, in the case of the tumor, it says the, it says chutzman aroy lemishkav emosha vadam. So what's on this? We're challenging the chutz already. So we already have covered both areas. We've covered the general rule, like in the case of kedushin, uh, where, where there's no chutz. We also covered the case of chutz and shown that even when there's a chutz, there are exceptions to the rule of chutz. But now we're just going to give another example. Afan and Amatina, I will support Rabbi Yochanan's statement also from here. And this is something familiar. So is it exceptions to the rule of chutz or just that the chutzes aren't, you know, exhaust? Well, well that's, that to me is the same thing. I'm not okay. sure the difference. Yeah, right. So I'm saying except, and that, right, I guess it's not a rule. There are those exceptions that don't cover all the exceptions, right? There are... There might be other exceptions, right? So, or Afan and I'll give you another example. Afan and Amatina, Bechoma Arvin Umishtatfin, in every situation, uh, with any, every type of food, you're allowed to make an Erev, or you're allowed to make a Shtufim Mavos with all types of food. It doesn't have to be Dafka, Matzah, or Chala, Umishtatfin, or you make a Shtufim Mavos, Chutzman Amayim Amelach, except for, right, here you have a Chutz, you have a rule, Bechoma Arvin, and you have a Chutz of Mayim and Melach, water and salt. Uh, that's what the Mishnah says. Vesuleka, really? Are those the only exceptions of the rule? Vika, Kamina, Pitros. What about um, truffles and mushrooms? Okay, that also are not fitting for an Erev, and yet the Mishnah does not mention them. Here's, here's another, another example of, of a situation where you do not learn from close, even when there's a Chutz there. Okay, and that's um, these. So now we have actually two to one. We have two examples of the of chutz where the chutz is not exhaustive, and we have one example where the klal is not uh, an all, all, all encompassing klal. Okay, let's do Rashi. So somehow truffles and and the mushrooms are not seen as as uh, enough food. It's not considered significant enough to uh, merit. Uh, you know, uh, making an air with them. Let's see Rashi. Um, no, uh, no Rashi. Okay, so that's 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 what it is. Um, it's just not not enough. You know, you wouldn't put it on a 
on a plate, you wouldn't serve it, and therefore let's go right there. Okay, we're at the two dots. The next statement in the Mishra is, I call Nikach Bekesef Meiser, right? You, you can buy anything. When you have your Kesef of Meiser Shani, you've redeemed your Meiser Shani, you put it on coins, you now take the coins up to Yushalayim and you buy stuff. What can you buy? Basically, anything except for Mayim and Melech. Okay, um, uh, you cannot buy, you cannot buy water and you cannot buy salt. So, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yosef Barachino, Chad Masya Erev, Chad Masya Meiser. Okay, Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Yosef disagree. One said that this statement, right, this, Bechol Ma'arvi Mishlav and Chutzman Amayim Melech, Chol Nikach Bekesef, Meiser, Chutzman Amayim, Umin Amelech. Okay, so every, anything which is bought with, um, with Meiser except for salt and water. So, Chad Masya Erev, Chad Masya Meiser. Let's see here. Look at Rashi for a minute. Chad Masya Erev, Chad Masya Meiser. Hi, Lo Shonu, the Komal Kamon. Okay, this statement, okay, that we're about to make. Thank you, Rashi. This statement that we're about to read, okay, because clearly from the mission it says it's referred to Meiser, but that we're about to say there are those who learn it as it relates to the Halach of Meiser. There are those who learn it as, as it relates to the Halach of Erev. Okay, Chad Masi Erev, Chad Masi Amaiser, Chad Masi Erev. One learns this statement on Erevs, meaning what? Loi Shanu Elamayim if they atzmo melech they atzmo. This rule that we just learned that you cannot have water or salt used uh, is only true is Loi Shanu Elamayim if they atzmo melech they atzmo. It's only learned when you have water by itself or salt by itself. They marvin where it's not um, where you can't make an Erev. That's where the rule applies. Of Mayim Umelach, of Bemayim Umelach, okay. Of Bemayim Umelach Ma'arvin. But if it's um, but if it's water, uh, if it's salt in water, we have salt water. But now it becomes an entity that now is fitting for a dip. You can actually use it as salt water. So even though you'd argue, well, if I have salt and water, I can just mix it together. Well, you didn't mix it together. Because right now they stand alone. As standing alone, they're not, they're not significant enough. If you mix it together and make salt water, you can make, you can, you can do that. The Chad Masya Meiser, there are those who say that this Loishanu was not said regarding an Erev, but rather said it regarding Meiser. Loishanu, Olamayu, Mifneatzmo, Melech, Mifneatzmo. This is only true when you have the, water, the, the salt and the water separately. They nikhin. You can't buy that with, kes, with the money of Meiser Shani. Of Mayu Melech, nikhin, the kes of Meiser. Okay, but, what, sort of, uh, but the salt and water together could be bought with Kesef, and we'll see if there are any differences. Bezashem Sunday morning. Shkoyach.